Hi, Emily Taylor here from Collage Quilter. Thank you for joining me. In this little segment, I'm gonna talk about cutting. I get lots of questions from people that are that go like this. What size should I cut? Um, how should I cut? What shape should I cut? Tell me all about cutting. So I decided this would be a helpful little, a little video. So I'm gonna do two demonstrations for you today. Number one, I'm starting with this foundation panel. This is my Clementine Beginner foundation panel pattern, and I'm gonna do some demonstrations on this, and then we're gonna go a little smaller, which might be a little more intimidating. So we're gonna go on, we're gonna demonstrate how to do a small flower like this with a pretty intricate center. And this is from the Garden Party uh, pattern. So let's dive in, shall we? All right, so I want to, <clears throat> I wanna cut these pieces and do a really, uh, collaged background. So that's what I call collage edge to edge when I do the background in addition to the foreground. Um, now you can see that I've already collaged and pressed some pieces down. So this is something that I wanted to talk about as well. All right, so my favorite scissors, I'm gonna just point this out. These are Karen K. Buckley six inch perfect scissors. And these seem to be just the perfect size for the work that I do. So you can see this is kind of a rounded edge. I don't have the luxury of lifting this up and tucking the background underneath. So you know what? I'm actually going to just be laying the background right on top. And that probably is a no-no for some people, but Emily does things very imperfectly and imperfection is good. Don't worry about that at all. So this is my first cut. It's just a triangle off the off the side of this piece and I'm going to just lay it right down just about an inch to a quarter of an inch. Now look, you can even see through that and that's okay. I, I'm gonna be just fine with that. So the way I'm gonna cut is just take my, my pieces that are have been cut into already, they're pretty random, and I generally will start with just triangles because it's the most efficient cut. And I will sometimes trim off the edge if there are threads that have been pulled off. Um, so this is just the funnest, easiest. It's like you can really zone out. Now I'm gonna make sure that I overlap. And I have a variety of fabrics because I like to have, that's the beauty of collage mixing up different fabrics. So here's another thing that I wanna point out, imperfection. I'm okay with that. For now, I'm gonna leave that. This has all been prepared with light steam -a seam 2, which means it's repositionable. So if at the end of the day, I really am unhappy with that little teeny imperfection, I can peel it away and reposition it, okay? So this is how I would handle the background, even for something that I have already uh, done the foreground on. Now, as I, as I work in an area that hasn't, um, that, that I haven't done already, I am going to cover up the gray tone and cover up that piece of fabric. So, there's a little bit of overlap, that's good. We want all these pieces to overlap. Easy peasy, right? So very random cuts. You can see the size is less than the palm of my hand or the largest cuts are equal to the palm of my hand. The larger the area that I'm trying to cover, the larger my pieces can become within reason because I want everything to have some uniformity. I don't want I don't want enormous pieces out here and then smaller pieces in here. So keep that in mind, just we want un uniformity. It's kind of what we're going for. But as things get smaller, you can make smaller pieces. Okay, so there we go. Let's be done with the background demonstration and let's move on to the pot. So again, I just have the fabric that I've selected in blue and white to kind of mimic a chinoiserie pot and I am going to just start cutting. So I tend to like do very angular cuts and you may prefer something that's more organic and rounded. 
and either way is just fine. I don't really get too hung up on the shape of things unless I'm, you know, trying to make something fit on the outline of a design. So I will sometimes just shift my pieces around, always making sure they overlap and then mixing up. As it gets lighter, I'm gonna go a little lighter. This has some threads on it, so I'm going to trim those threads off and any exposed steam seam. We don't want that. So there we go. And I would just continue in this vein double checking that everything has been, um, all the fabric has been adhered to the steam seam. So for a project like this, that's a beginner project that's pretty big, this is how, th these, this is the size of cuts that I make and the shape, the shape is quite random. So now let's, uh, let me just show you too, in the leaves, I haven't done, um, I haven't done all the, I haven't done leaf shapes per se. Again, you can see things that kind of mimic a leaf shape, but really it's just following that same concept that I am just cutting kind of random shapes. My shapes tend to be kind of angular, triangular, and then laying them down. And I'm not worried about anything other than really the values and a good variety of fabric on this project because the fabric is what's going to make this collage look really interesting. So now let's move on to a smaller project. All right, so here is, I'm gonna work on this little flower here. You can see this whole flower is the size of my hand. So this is a very different type of cutting. Will be a lot more detailed and intricate. Still, the shapes are somewhat random, but this flower again is from the Garden Party quilt along, or a Garden Party pattern. And I like to have, and this is also a parchment pressing pattern. So the Clementine that I just showed you was on uh, foundation panel, this is parchment pressing. So the other thing, you can see that I've traced this out onto parchment paper, and I've also labeled the values. So I have three values that I'm gonna be worrying about today. I've started with the darkest. So that's really where I'm gonna start, is the darkest. So here are my fabrics. I've got these dark ones, mid-tones, and then I've got a few lights right there. Okay. So I'm gonna start with my dark, and again, these are just scraps that I've used previously, but I'm gonna I'm gonna start laying them down now. So the cuts quite a bit smaller, right, than what you saw with the clementine, and the I I do a lot of uh, kind of auditioning of the size and the shape. The shape isn't going to be super precise. So really the gray tones in my patterns are guides. They're not, generally speaking, you don't have to be super precise with uh, the transition between values. And you can see, I'm actually gonna lay this part right over that center part of the design. Here's my wand iron. This is really, really helpful to use when I am doing parchment pressing. In fact, I think it's just an essential tool. So I'm looking at this little shape right here now, and I just really wanna kinda of get that edge right, and I don't care so much about the rest of that shape, but I wanna get that edge right. So, there we go, and then I want to fill that in. Uh, let's see with this. This has a really scalloped edge, so I may decide that I want to try and mimic that scallop. We'll see how I did. 
Yeah, it's close, pretty close, right? Close enough. And I really just worry about things being close enough. I don't, I really do not fret about the precision on that. So really the dark is just kind of outlining this, uh, the center of the flower. One more little piece should probably fit right down here. Now these pieces are getting, they're getting, as I said, much smaller. I generally try to avoid pieces that are smaller than my thumbnail. There are occasions when I break that rule because I do break my own rules all the time. Um, one in particular, one instance in particular is when I am doing an animal eye. So when that is going on, then I go smaller than my thumbnail and you can find that video on my YouTube channel about doing animal eyes. Okay, one more little piece right there. And then according to the design, I think I've got that pretty well covered. Okay, now I'm gonna move to the next value which will be the mid-tone value. So I'm gonna take my darks out and I'm gonna slide over to these. Now, these can be multiple fabrics and the more fabric you use in a collage, the more interesting it is. So my pieces are gonna start, you know, they're smaller, but if you don't want to use multiple pieces, that's, you could use one piece there, right? And again, all I'm really focusing on is getting that outside edge. So I, I like to kind of shift it around and see where the best is best. Let's do it right. I'm gonna go right there. <clears throat> Let's see if I if I just trim that down like that, oops. This is why it's really helpful to use a wand iron because these pieces not are, the parchment paper is non-stick and that non-stick can sometimes make your fabric slip, slip off until the pieces start sticking to each other. Okay, so I think we're gonna go like that kind of get the edge of that. And I probably don't need to cover up quite so much of that. So I might take that piece and put it somewhere else. There we go. Okay. Let's take that little piece and just add it over here. What do you say? So this is a little bit like uh, creating doing a puzzle, but you can cheat <laughs> because you can cut the sizes and make them fit in the area where you're working. Let's see here. Let's kind of position that around and I think I'll trim that edge off to get, there we go. And as you do this more and more, of course, you will get better and better at being able to eyeball things. I need my tweezers here. Let me grab my tweezers. Now it looks like I need one more piece right there. It's really helpful to have these tweezers handy so that if I wanna uh, change the layer, the layering order. These are really helpful to do that. Um, I think I wanna, now generally these are two different values, but as I'm looking at this, I think, oh, it, it could probably use a little pop. I think I'll, I think I'll put something else in there that might make it a little more interesting. Never be afraid of trying to make your collage look a little bit more interesting. With 
different fabric. And especially remember at this point, I can uh, change things out if I, if I need to. And let's see, one more little piece right there. And then one more little piece right there. And that looks like that is a common um, shape that I see all the time. And it's just a triangle, my favorite shape. Bam, just like that. It's a rounded triangle. There are some threads on this, so I'm gonna trim those off. And these pieces are getting a little small, so I'm gonna employ my, my trusty tweezers. As things get smaller, you will want to have those tweezers, I promise. Of course, the tweezers are available on my website, as are any of my patterns and my books. And the website is collagequilter.com. Okay, so there we see, that's how I would do the remainder of this. Now I'm gonna show you how I will handle the center. So this is called a sass tracing. I want to take my fabric that I've selected. So I've got, again, three values. So I've got the lighter value, the mid-tone, and then the really, really dark. So I'm gonna start with that lighter section and I'm going to, I'm gonna trace this. And this works with anything that you, I could do this on any of the uh, petals of the flowers, whatever um, needs to be pretty precise. So I can, I just lay it down. I peel back the, the fabric so that I can see the foundation or see the template underneath. And I'm gonna trace that. Then I put my paper or my fabric back. I like to press that again so that it doesn't slide around. But there's my guide. And this is, a, is, is, this is called a sass tracing. Again, does it need to be perfect? No, in fact, I'm gonna just go like this and then I can. Now this is an instance where I will actually layer the these other pieces right on top of this. So I'm not gonna lay it down just quite yet, um, but I will in, in just a second. So here's the, here's the little bit darker piece that I've decided to use and expose the, or pull back the steam -a seam, trace that, put that back. I'm gonna press it again just so that the steam -a seam paper stays on it. And there's my template. So again, you can use this technique anytime you're feeling a little intimidated, but I prefer, generally speaking, to freehand cut. I guess that's the best way to, to say it, that it's a freehand cut. So this now is gonna go right there. And then I'm going to do the center. Now that's just a circle. So I really am not even gonna worry about that, but to help myself out, I'm gonna just draw it on the back. And that's probably close enough, right? So cut it out and then Just go around the tracing, peel that off, and and let's get that paper off and put this on the top. Ta-da! Ooh, I love it. Perfect. Now I'm gonna press that as a unit. 
like this. Now there's paper still on the back of that one. And now that those are all pressed together, I can just peel this paper off. And this will go right in the center of my flower. There, so that's what the flat, now I would probably do this last, but it doesn't matter. So there we go, that's the demonstration. I wanna thank you so much for joining me. Again, if you have um, interest in learning more, please subscribe to my YouTube channel or check out my website, collagequilter.com.